Hey everyone, right now we're going to get the most out of the Psi 1 or Psi 200 or Psi 300 using an equalizer pedal before the Psi and that'll allow you to get the most out of arpeggios and chords and even lead lines with root notes. So this is what we had before. And now we've got... So as you can tell, the higher notes are way more pronounced and well articulated, and if we were to arpeggiate something, it's way better than this. And I'm not even sure if you can tell what chord I'm playing right now, but you probably didn't know that it was this one. And that's because without the EQ, Can never hear those high notes. All right, and uh, the examples only get more blatant and obvious, but um, how about you listen to a few cool ravey chords and um, lead lines and we can see how the equalizer really helps. <laughs> okay, you didn't even hear those high notes at all, did you? Um, and maybe we could play some other cool riffs like um, cowboy chords. All right. So again, those high notes are really popping nicely. Okay, so um, what's really going on here is perhaps you're familiar with my Tube Screamer video where um, a tube screamer before the Psi really helps articulate notes, and I do that with my Psi 300 as well. But um, I'm working out quickly that this is even better, because the notes it receives are that much more precise, they aren't distorted or anything like that, or overdriven. Um, so the base of it is, um, <laughs> the basics of it, is to remove the bass. Okay, once you've killed this low frequency, it's 63 hertz, but um, on a GE7 it might be 100 hertz. And uh, you could boost 1000 hertz. Or on the GE7 by Boss, you'd have to perhaps do a combination of 800 and 1600. And uh, then I just reduce the gain a little bit just to balance out the volume of the signal that it's receiving. And um, to be honest, even when I don't have the Psy on, I really like this tone. And um, yeah, it just sounds like a nice warm amplifier, to be honest or something like that. I don't really know much about amps. And uh, the Psy1 really likes this frequency range, and you're probably thinking, why don't you just switch to like your pickup uh, by the bridge? Well, if I do do that without the equalizer, then basically, you just get a more rich root note. It's just a bit brighter, but it still just dominates this chord. And obviously when I use the EQ, those high notes really stand out. So switching the pickups and the pickup combination on my Stratocaster really doesn't help. So I actually just enjoy playing with the neck pickup and now it doesn't matter because the EQ takes care of these sorts of problems. And um, if you don't have this EQ, good luck arpeggiating. You have to have this. Now the reason for all of this is obviously because the Psi 1 wants to focus on the chord and track it as accurately as possible and it's a subtractive synthesizer so basically if you're going to feed it a chord with a lot of harmonic content it's going to focus on the most strong frequencies which is almost always the bass frequencies so let me quickly try and show you by killing all the other frequencies which ones it actually likes the most so i'm going to play this chord let's try um yeah let's just try some sort of B bar chord, or it's going to be B flat for you. Right? And then the Psi is only really interested in the first three notes. I mean, would you really know if I was playing a power chord or a bar chord at this moment? Because that was a power chord. <laughs> and that was the full bar, but you really don't 
pick up on those notes once I start playing the root note as well. Okay, you get the point. Okay, now let's bring in this EQ. If you give it nothing but bass. And let me get rid of the OC5. I know that that has been uh, clouding your judgment about how much a bass the Siwon brings up, but now you'll know for sure. And bring up the volume a bit since I've killed everything. Okay, so it's just following the route once again. Let's try 125 hertz. Bass dominant like you wouldn't believe. Let's try 250. Better. But still mostly root note. Let's try 500. Okay, also a lot better. 1000. Obviously the best when you're trying to bring out those higher notes during a chord. In fact, that's really nice. Okay, you could actually just have this in an effects loop where the EQ7 is only ever used with the Psi 1. Um, or your Boss GE7 or whatever you have. I just like this one's 1000 boost. It's really nice. Um, okay, now 2.2. Let's get back to our chords. Okay, now it's not really helping. You can see how the Psy one's not really interested in anything above 1000 hertz, especially not 2.2000. And then 5000, same problem, I should think. It's now basically just saying, okay, down here, these are the ones I'm focusing on. It's a little bit of a quiet guitar as far as as far as the Psy one's concerned. Yeah, it's basically just my original guitar tone, isn't it? With a bit more high end, of course. So it's plain to see that boosting 1000 is important, but if you don't cut 63 or 100 at least, then um, that's okay. It's actually not. It's definitely not as good as. And I'll prove it to you. If I'm going to play um, B flat and uh, D on the highest string, then. Right, you can still hear all that. Bring in. Don't cut the bass. You could barely hear this note. So it's really important that you do cut some bass, otherwise you're, you're never gonna... The high strings are just never gonna win against the dominant low frequencies and the lower notes. Okay, it's really important. Um, yeah, and I could try cutting maybe that 1, 2, 5 range instead. You know, it almost works. Okay, so again, 100, around about 100 hertz is what really counts. And um, if you get rid of it altogether, you might be losing a bit too much punch. And to be honest, my Psy 300, which is able to focus on low notes only and make synths out of the low notes while the rest of the Psy 300's oscillators focus on high notes, um, it really helps to have a little bit of low-end information for the Psy to focus on. Um, but with the Psy 1, that's not really such an issue. And yeah, it really depends on what you're playing, but um, why don't we just make some rock and add a drum kit and some bass again and see how this thing sounds, right? Um, you might enjoy more cowboy chords. <laughs> Of course, without that, it's going to sound like... You can't even hear it. Okay, so I think that's pretty wonderful. Um, and yeah, this is this really does represent me fiddling around with all these frequencies until I can find the best one that works with a subtractive pedal-based synthesizer. And um, we haven't really heard many other synths, but let's just quickly go to one of my other favorites.
on this battle, but, uh, you can, you can try them all out yourself. And without your trusty EQ7 or GE7, too bad, but it's just not. And yeah, um, it's been absolutely remarkable. Um, little bonus point for pointing out that if I put my Stratocaster into position 2, and I kill the tone on the second pickup, then um, I get a little bit of a volume boost for some reason. Maybe you guys know a bit more about strats than I do. It's actually the only electric I play, and I don't know too much about it. But um, for some reason, there's a little boost when I use the second position, and I turn down the tone on the second tone knob, and it really shines. I mean, I'm feeding this Psy 1. And it just articulates that so very well. Um, but if I don't use the EQ7, it's still flat and dead, alright? So it really isn't about the strats, it's really not even about the pickups. It clearly is just such a benefit to have this EQ7 involved. Alright, so that's pretty much everything. Um, this has got to help you so much more than my Tube Screamer idea, because, um, well, I love the tone on the Tube Screamer as well, so sometimes I still do use that. But this is just a way more clean way to get the right frequencies fed into your Psi 1 and if you pop these two into the effects loop of your GT1000 core or whatever you have, uh, whatever you can afford, um, then uh, it's really a great combo just to have them on together and um, to use them in an effects loop together so that they, when you go back to your clean tone, <laughs> which shouldn't be that, at least you got your nice clean guitar that you know and love and then wham. Out comes the synth. Great, so thank you so much, and um, if you're looking for any more crazy experiments, uh, this one wasn't so crazy, but it really is important, um, then please feel free to subscribe, make sure you like this video, and uh, I'll be sure to entertain your comments and other crazy ideas that you can give me. I really do value that kind of thing. So thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.